Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross from PTCG Radio, and I'm back with another deck breakdown. And this time we are looking at my Seismitoad deck. Now, we have looked at Seismitoad before, but we've not looked at this particular build. This build is a post-Phantom Forces build, and what we're basically saying is, look, Times have moved on, decks have moved on, let's move on too. So the deck still revolves around Seismitoad, and Seismitoad is still as beastly as ever. Seismitoad has an attack called Quaking Punch for a double colourless energy. It does 30 damage and stops your opponent playing Trainers next turn. This is absolutely brilliant and fantastic, and one could argue borderline broken. It's crazy good. The big problem is 30 damage doesn't do much, which is why we play a bunch of Muscle Band to add... 20 damage making it up to 30, and we play Hypnotostic Laser which poisons your opponent, and we play Verbank City Gym which makes that opponent do 30 between turns. Excuse me, that poison do 30 between turns. What that means is I Quaking Punch for 50, they go to 80. At the end of their turn, they go up to 110. I then Quaking Punch for 50 to put them up to 160, and the poison kicks in, they go up to 190, and they dead. You are essentially two hit KOing anything using this. That, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty good. Now, in terms of other Pokemon, we're using Garbodor to block. Um, abilities, and we're using Reshiram as an Outrager. We can't use Blue Flare, but we can use Outrage. Now, the reason Garbodor's in here is to block abilities, and the format is quite simple. I am going to keep my opponent um, active, and I'm going to block trainers, and I'm going to block abilities, and I'm going to play uh, lasers, and they're going to die. And that's really quite simply it. If I play against something like Pyrrhal, well, I can hit them with Seismitoad, because I've got a Garbodor out. Once I've got a Garbodor out, my opponent isn't able to play um, something like Startling Megaphone to get rid of the tool to turn Garbodor off. Now, the one thing they can do is Lissandra the Garbodor active, but the good thing about Seismitoad, rather than something like Trevenant, is that they can't play... Um, items after I've used the attack. What that means is that even if they drive, grab my Garbodor active, they can't get rid of the Floatstone which I've inevitably put on it, and I can just retreat Garbodor and get going again. Do be careful putting a Muscle Band onto your Garbodor. It will turn on Garbotoxin, but it means your opponent can Lissandra Garbodor and you probably won't be able to get it out the active. Now, we are playing Water Energy, so we can use Grenade Hammer, and this does 130 damage. But in this build of the deck, that goes up to 150 if we've got a Muscle Band, and 180 with a Verbank City Gym and a Hypnotoxic Laser. So we are essentially one-hit KOing EXs using Grenade Hammer, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely crucial. This is... it's what, make the deck, it's what makes the deck tick if you will. The general theory of the deck is you try and get Garbodor out and you Quaking Punch turn after turn after turn until you can end the game with Grenade Hammer. You want to leave your Grenade Hammers until you're desperate or until you're at a stage in the game where essentially you're going to Grenade Hammer once or twice and that's going to be the end of the game. Now the other reason Reshiram's in here is to absorb that Grenade Hammer damage. Grenade Hammer does 30 damage to two of your benched Pokemon, and Reshiram gets hit with that, and then Reshiram outrages for 50 or 70 with a Muscle Band. If you hit it twice, you outrages for 80 or 100 with a Muscle Band. The reason we use Reshiram rather than Kyurem or Zekrom is because it gives us the slimmest of slim hopes against a deck like, for instance, Rizian Genesect. Uh, Seismitoad is weak to grass. Against grass decks, we have very little to go with, but Reshiram is here to try and outrage them. It's not a great plan, but it's there. It's also pretty useful against something like Donphan, force them to attack into the Reshiram, but it's far from ideal. One thing I'm considering in this deck is cutting the two Reshiram for a 1-1 one, one Driftblim line. Driftblim does 50 damage times the number of special energy in your opponent's discard pile, which won't do much against Rizzi and Genesect unless they start using Plasma Energy, which they're probably not going to, especially if they see the Driftblim coming out, but it's going to be really good against something like Donphan. You get rid of free special energy, you're one-hit KOing Donphan. Having said that, with a Quaking Punch with a Muscle Band Verbank Laser, you're also one one hit KOing Don fan. And that's the Pokemon line. In terms of the energy, we've got four double colorless because it's amazing, and we've got seven water because from my testing, that is the lowest I've been able to get away with playing. In terms of supporter line, we're playing four N because it's amazing, and we're playing four Juniper because it's amazing. They're the two best supporters. We play four of each in pretty much every deck.
We are playing Free Skylar because we've got lots of trainer cards here that we want to be using. More on them in a minute. And we play Free Chorus because... I suppose my friend Tamal said it the best. This is a deck where we bench everything. We draw Seismitoad, we bench it. Um, we draw Trubbish, we bench it. We draw Reshram, we bench it. Maybe we're a little bit careful here and there because we don't want a Seismitoad with no energy to get Lissandred if we're out of DCE. But generally, we bench stuff. We're going to end up with a full bench. And the other thing is, we don't need to be going quickly here. If I draw a Colrus on my first turn of the game, as long as I've got a Seismitoad DCE, I can start going, wait for people to bench stuff, and then play Colrus. We play one VS Seeker because I've only got room for one. I dearly wish I could have two. We play two Lissandra because in a deck like this, Lissandra is amazing. It allows us to grab our opponent's bench Pokemon active, which is especially good if they're not able to retreat it. We grab an opposing Seismitoad, for instance. We hit it for 30. It's got a retreat cost of 3. They're not going to be able to get out of the active. Evil Tal, for instance, has a... Our uh, retreat cost of a double colourless energy, but they have to play a double colourless in order to do that, and that plays right into our favour, because they're getting rid of double colourless, and if they don't get rid of it, we can enhance Tammer. It works very nicely. We play free Ultra Ball, because we can get away with free, because we're essentially using largely a basic Pokemon deck, and with the free Skylar, we can always search it out if need be. Four Hypnotosic Laser, because it's amazing and we want as many as we can. Two Verbank City Gym, because against most decks that's going to be enough. My theory with stadiums at the moment, and feel free to disagree with me on this, is either play two or play four. If you play two, that is going to be good against most decks. The decks it isn't going to be good enough is, say, fighting decks that play four fighting stadium. Well, if my opponent's playing four fighting stadium, it's not really going to matter if I've got Verbank City Gym in a quantity of three. I'm really going to need four to make that viable. So that's why I'm playing two of them here. If I could find room for four, I would love four. But if I could find room for four, I'd probably put a 1-1 one -one Driftblim line in. So, hey-ho. We play one Escape Rope because... Switching is less important. Once we've got our Seismitoad active, we're not really going to want to switch very often. The Escape Rope works as an emergency switch, but it also works nicely if my opponent has got two Pokemon down, I can force them to bring up the other one. Or if they've got one attacker, I can force them to bring up something else on the bench that isn't ready to attack, and I can lock their trainers and essentially keep something undesirable in the active position. Switching is for if we've got a variety of attackers, or because we're worried about, for instance, being kept asleep by something like Hypnotoxic Laser. That's not an issue when we're trainer and ability locking. Even something like Malamar, which can put you asleep with its ability, can't work if we've got Garbodor on the bench. And we're not switching attackers here. We're using Seismitoad pretty much every single turn of the game. We play Computer Search here for the reasons I've always said. Any deck that revolves around uh, double colorless energy needs to play Computer Search because it's the only way you've got of searching for it. Enhanced Hammer is there because we're trying to slow our opponent down. A lot of decks that are good against Seismitoad are aggressive decks that need special energy. Something like Donphan can be good, so we enhance Hammer the strong energy away. Something like Mewtwo can be good, so we enhance Hammer the double colorless away. Evil Tau can be good, so we, we enhance Hammer the double colorless away. I would like four, but three is a bit of a compromise here. Amazing against Donphan, really quite good against Evil Tau, but really quite garbage against Vrizzy and Genesect if they they don't bother putting down any um, plasma energy. And there's plenty of decks that don't play special energy. So free is really a compromise here. I don't think we need free. Uh, like I've said, two Lissandra, one VS Seeker, it allows us to really have free per game. Now, if you listen to my podcast, PTCG Radio, you'll realise, or you will have learned, I should say, or heard, or whatever you want to call it, that I played one Lissandra and one Lissandra's trump card at a recent regional. And one of the things I hated about the deck was that lack of being able to draw them active. Um, it's really good for stalling, it's really good for taking prizes, and it wins the Donphan matchup. Because you can bring the Donphan active and kill it, and without enough Lissandras you can't do that. I also played it with Crushing Hammer and just a couple of lasers, rather than my full suite of laser and Verbank has here. And again, we really need to be doing that, because now we can one-hit KO a Donphan using Quaking Punch, which we couldn't do before. It's quite a bit to have, but if you've got a Seismitoad of a DC and a Muscle Band, then Laser, Verbank, Lissandra, you're killing those Donphans. Yeah, I'd like more Lissandra, yeah, I'd like more Verbank City Gym, but there's only so much space in the deck. 
Free muscle band is a compromise. It's amazing we want four, but we don't have space. The float stones are in there, largely for garbage, but they also work for retreating other stuff that you don't have a muscle band attached to, or to which you don't have a muscle band attached. Um, and again, free is a bit of a compromise. We'd like four, but we can't really get away with four, so having three works quite nicely. The only card I haven't explained here yet is Headringer. And this again is a card that I don't know what I want to play in terms of numbers here, but I've gone for two. I would love four, but the problem is you play Donphan, this card is instantly useless and can actually clog up your hand. You play against something like Vrizian Genesect, however, and this card is absolutely key in terms of trying to slow your opponent down and be able to get a couple of quaking punches off in order to maybe really make a run at, at winning the game here. It's really good against Evil Tal as well in terms of slowing them down. And it can be used in conjunction with Lysandra to, for instance, drag something active and put a head ringer on it so that you can essentially kill them before they're able to actually retreat or attack because you've got the head ringer active. A Seismitoad, for instance, is going to have a retreat cost of free and an attack cost of free if they've got a head ringer attached. So you, um, Lysandra, up an opponent Seismitoad and they are going to be really struggling to actually do anything before they end up dead. Now there's other cards you can play here, something like a Team Flare Grunt to automatically discard the um, an energy attached to your opponent's active is good, but it's a little bit too fringe, a little bit too niche, even against something like Verizian Genesect, you're rarely going to have this at the right time. And with a deck like Seismitoad, you want a Garbodor on the bench and a Seismitoad active with a DCE and a muscle band, and then you want a Verbank City Gym in play, and you want a Hypnotoxic Laser. You want them coming out to you. you then you want to be using Lysandras, really, so it's not so much that you don't have the room for Team Flare Grunt. I'm sure I could find room for it, and something like VS Seek would allow me to reuse it, but it's really finding the turns. I want Draw Supporter, Draw Supporter, Draw Supporter, and then I want to, you know, finish up the game with Lysandra, and that's really not a... it's not a viable solution, really if I'm trying to use Team Flare Grunt all the time. Plenty of changes could be made to this. It is very much a testing deck breakdown in the truer sense of the word. But if you want a Hammer Toad list which runs quite consistently, works quite well, and is fairly successful, I would encourage you to have a look at this and change it as appropriate. The one tournament I took this to, I ended up finishing 3-3, but two of my losses were to Verizian Genesect. One, I just drew badly slash got outplayed. And one, I should have had a win. I misattached an energy... Sorry, I should have had a draw, I should have had a win in one of the two games, but I misattached an energy to turn a draw into a loss. It is a viable deck, ladies and gentlemen. My other loss um, in that particular tournament was to a Donphan deck, and in this particular tournament I was playing one Lysandra, not two in a VS Seeker, and I was not playing Verbank City Gym. That made my Donphan matchup much, much weaker, because I wasn't able to take out the Donphans using Lysandra, and I wasn't able to one-hit KO them with Quaking Punch, because I wasn't playing Verbank City Gym. So this particular build has a much stronger match up against Don Fan, and I would have feel a lot more comfortable going into the tournament I went into with this list as opposed to the one I played previously. I would also recommend trying Max Potion in this list, but really you need to prioritise Enhanced Hammer, Head Ringer, Verbank City Gym, Hypnotosic Laser and Lysandra in this particular deck. So unfortunately I'm never going to be playing Max Potion here because I would add Lysandra, VS Seeker, Verbank City Gym and Head Ringer before I put in any Max Potion. As always, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment. And if you've already subscribed, go find a friend, get them to subscribe and watch the video. I will hopefully be putting up a video of this deck in action in the very near future. And I shall similarly be giving you more deck breakdowns including Evil Tail Dust Noir and a different size toad list that plays just four double colourless energy. And I'll be showing both of them to you in the very near future. As always, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.